hit movie The Young Victoria joins Paul O'Grady live at five. First on four, it's Wednesday's Deal or No Deal. Twenty-two boxes, a quarter of a million pounds. Just one question. Welcome to Deal or No Deal. Dream Factory. I know you love it when you get a little bit of a glimpse behind the scenes here at Deal or No Deal. And we had one of those glimpses yesterday. And so today's show is going to be even more interesting. I know the East Wing and the West Wing are very loyal to us. I didn't realise that certain players have a blind allegiance until yesterday. I mentioned to Derek over there that actually his bow tie, in my opinion you know, king of sartorial elegance and all that, didn't match his waistcoat. And he said it's what the wardrobe lady put on his hanger. In other words, he'd wear anything that she said he ought to wear. He's not there right at the moment because, ladies and gentlemen, this is what Derek was told to wear today. Derek! Only get better. <laughs> Here come the players. Well, I certainly hope you are fully energized. Rich! Yeah. Good name for a big game. Take the walk of wealth, please, Rich. Now yours, Thank Rich. You. Richard. Rich. Bataille. <laughs> that sounds like the um, the guy that phones me up when I pay my credit card. It's like, Mr. Richard Bataille. And he uh, pronounced it wrong, but it's Batty. Batty. Yeah. Customer services representative from mm -hmm. Leeds. What sort of services? Um, we rent out um, vehicles for sort of three years, typically to businesses, contract hire. Mm -hmm. So... Um, I should really know more about my job, but I, I, can't, I can't just say anything intelligent about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going gonna, gonna, to explain the benefits of, of, of a company doing it, and my bosses are going to be watching this, and they're going to be like, he ain't got a clue what he's doing. <laughs> so, um, tell me about Holly. Holly, um, that's uh, the missus. Um, the missus? Yeah. You're married to Holly? No. Um, um, I'm just so... so I don't, I don't know what to say. Um, it's okay. It's okay. So, you don't know much about your job. You don't know much about the lady in your life. I was really getting quite excited about this opening line in your CV that says, you have a distinctive taste in music and fashion and the manner in which you conduct yourself. But actually, Rich, you are weird, aren't you? <laughs> I mean, there's no point in me being over polite and fawning about it. And you know, there is something incredibly attractive about you. <laughs> Not in that sense, right? But you are a very distinctive individual. The, the beard, the facial hair, and the haircuts that you've had down the years, and you're calling me a weirdo. <laughs> I just wanted some energy. Right, I just wanted okay. to get... I've got there. Yeah. yeah. OK, now you've picked that uh, photograph up. Yeah, yeah. And now we're going to talk seriously about 
your hero? Mm. Yeah, I suppose it could be quite difficult this to be honest, but um, it's you know even even quite hard to look at now. Um, okay, do you want me to help you, Ian? Your mm -hmm. father, nicknamed Big Joe, mm -hmm. but he was diagnosed with cancer in May 2006. Yeah. Hey, big fan of the show, big Noel Edmonds fan, and yeah, he phoned me up at work and told me what was going on with it. You know? mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, you know, part, I'm, this, this part of me, this sort of things, so, you know, I'm doing this for him to some extent. So he'd love to have seen it, but unfortunately not. Do you sense anything in terms of um, his support still? Are, are you a touchy-feely spiritual person? Not really, no. Um, one thing that I have got, um, I mean, I get no sort of feeling from any of these boxers or anything, but <coughs> he's looking over as number eight. Um, it, when he played professional rugby league, that were his number that he played in. And um, I think that's, that's sort of anchor that I've got in this game. That's about it, really. Yeah. OK, are you, are you happy to get on with this game? Um, well, we'll get going and see how it goes. I've got to do the one little bit of uh, housekeeping. Yeah. Uh, I need you, please, to confirm you chose box 17 at random before the game began. I did indeed. You sealed by the independent adjudicator who sealed that box and the other 21 boxes. Mm. And is the only person who knows where the money is. OK. OK. Rich, I hope you have an incredibly successful game. Thank you. Good luck, Rich. Good luck. <laughs> Let's get new be our way because it's uh, nerve wracking for the first time. Maureen, um, we'll go for you for 21. An amazing week. Three games where the 1P has been discovered in the opening round. And the first box yesterday, quarter of a million. The first box today, that 1P. The perfect start. I've not got a clue what I'm doing. I have really. Um, go on then, number 40. Good luck. 15 grand. Right, 18. Maybe it's my mother's name. Let's go here. Good luck, Rich. I hope it's not the same as I had yesterday. What was that? I hope it's not the same as I had <laughs> yesterday. What was it? What was it? There's quite an echo in here today, isn't there? <laughs> well, it's like being in it's like being in the caves at Cheddar. I'm sure I heard that I twice. It's in blue. Go on then. <laughs> I hope it's not what you had yesterday. Ooh. Hey, you're getting a recommendation. Three, David. It's nice to know that there are people stranger than me. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, Rich, I like you really. Oh, no! 75,000 and 50,000. Number seven, Stephen. I tell you, he's only been here one day and he's getting bigger. <laughs> uh, ain't on the food they're feeding me, that's for sure. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> it's good to have Barry White back with us. <laughs> Go on, do that voice again. Go on. Brace yourself, Lisa. Here it comes. Oh, it's a blue just for you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> you embarrassed yourself there, didn't you? <laughs> right, how would you describe that before he does? It's all right, isn't it? Could be better. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a reasonable one. Could be better. Hello, banker. All right, 
on now. Mm -hmm. Well, he thinks you look fantastic. Uh, yeah, he, he thinks your style is fantastic. He thinks your fashion sense is fantastic. Your demeanour, your manner, everything about you is absolutely fantastic. He doesn't like the fact that other people have been having a go at you. Can't think who he's uh, referring to there. And uh, he just thinks that you are 100% absolutely fantastic. You make an effort, apparently, not like these other people who wear things that fell out of a skip. <laughs> yeah, he says you're terrific, Rich. Well, oh, thanks. You're worried about Rich? Yeah, he says you're looking very nervous, Rich. Mm. Are you feeling... Oh, sorry. Scratching a lot, yeah. That's going to be your first offer, is it? <laughs> shampoo. You're offering shampoo. Okay. Yeah, the opening up. The first offer is shampoo. Oh, but a particular brand. Pan ten. One pound ten p. Bad times. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, go on then. Oh, what, off? <laughs> <laughs> well, we might as well get formalities out of the way. Okay, so you'd like a question? Yeah. One pound ten. Deal or no deal? No deal. Thank you. <laughs> right, on we go. As I've got no other way of selecting these boxes and drawing attention to you. I hope it's a 10p for you, lovely kid. Oh. <laughs> With one little bit of light blue relief in the middle, that has been 75.50 at quarter of a million. The only guy that makes me feel normal when I'm dressing myself. Uh, Derek, number 30. Best of luck, mate. Thanks, mate. Well done, Derek. You're looking fabulous today. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Hard work. Well, you can have a break now. Is it, is it break time, is it? Yeah. It's nap time. Yeah. And we need everyone to come back to Rich's game, realising that you actually know you can turn this around and you can go away with a life-changing sum of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah? We're going to yeah. do that? OK. OK. Yeah. I'm going to pick him up, I'm going to pick him up, and you'll see a very different Rich when you return. Done the gags. Rich Batty's here, and we've got one to go to the next call. Number two. Is that okay, me? Jerry, we're with you. Good luck, Rick. Cheers. Bad for Rich. Well, a quarter of a million has gone, yes. Oh, he's regretting making the hair shampoo joke for your first offer. I think you want conditioner, I might consider it. As well. Yeah. Uh, you're getting a two in one offer, Rich. Go on then. All right, okay. Two plus one, 3,000 pounds. That's your offer at this point. Greeted. A total silence. 
How's that grab you? Well, I suppose, you know, two fifties gone and there's, there's another two big ones gone there. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's fair enough, I suppose. It's a precarious situation. Really. Yeah. I mean, if that hundred grand goes, then I'm struggling, but... Rich, you've still got some really good numbers up there, mate. Absolutely. I don't think it's time to wash and go. <laughs> Well done, Chumley Warner. Well done. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Edmonds. Go on then. What? Um, I don't. I don't want to like um, just say ask us a question. I don't know. I suppose. No, fine. Go on then. It's fine. <laughs> Three thousand pounds. Deal or no deal? No deal. Thank you. Look, Rich. Yeah. Come on. You want an all blue rinse? Like a 22 pressure. <laughs> Death box? I don't believe that. No? No. Nah. Okay. 22 Patricia. Patricia? We're not frightened of you. I've always got a blue, so hopefully this is another one. Oh, now you're frightening me. Ah. <laughs> Go on. All the best. Thank you. I said that yesterday. <laughs> 20,000. The run had to end. She's got her first red. Number nine, Kieran. All right, Kieran, come on, get us back on the blues. Take the 10p, balance that 20. Good luck here, Rich. How many is that? What do you mean? That's left or you've had? <laughs> is that... I don't know how many boxes I've opened. Is it time? time? Uh, you're currently at the halfway stage. Right, OK. Hello. It is an interesting board. Rich says he likes playing boards like this. Which could... Oh, he says, I'm not going to enjoy this. It's going to be a tough battle from now on. Well, you better come up with a jolly good offer then. And then he says, seven and a half thousand. To make every decision difficult. Do you feel that's difficult? Yeah. Yeah. Johnny, what do you reckon? It's a very good offer, man. Mm. But I think there's another round in it myself. OK. George, we, we tend to be on some sort of wavelength. Please. That's right. Yeah, I think it's worth another go, Rich. Plenty of blues now and... be very unlucky to take out the 100,000. Is it true that on one occasion you did buy 111 lottery tickets thinking it was a dead cert to win? Um, my mum doesn't know about this. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I put it down, so, you know. Um, she probably got mad on me. Um, yeah, well, we'd got down to... Me and a friend from work had got down to the last £50 pounds that we had in his bank accounts before her payday. And we decided that, you know... <laughs> We've just figured that if you buy 111 lottery tickets, then you've got to win some money. And, um... How much did you win? A tenner. <laughs> and since that day, I've never played lottery again. I thought, well, if I can't win by buying 111 tickets, what's the chance of buying, buying you know, if buying one ticket at a time? So I never played again after that. So it's all cured... Any, any urge that I had to ever play the lottery again, I think. I've always said that, that I wouldn't go away with nothing. Um, 
I think you're about, you're, I think you have at least another game in there. Okay. Go on then. Seven and a half thousand pounds. Deal or no deal? Um, I think it's pitched it quite well and also wobbling a bit, but no deal. Thank you. We've got to get a box with 100,000, obviously undiscovered, but the 35 and 10 need to remain concealed as well. 3,000 downwards. That won't be damage rich. You can do it. Come on. Right, five, Dermot. Okay, Dermot, we're going with you. A blue, please. 3,000, that's fine. That's all right. two blues. Ideally, you now want two blues, and of course, double ideally, they want to be 10p and 50p. 12 win. Rich, you've been an absolute superstar, mate. Let's not split any hairs, I hope this is a blue. <laughs> <laughs> Better be after that. <laughs> I like this. I like the feel of this. Can you find that 50p? Six, Linz. Okay, Linz. Linz. It has to be blue for Rich. A most unusual character who has produced a fascinating battle with the banker. A battle that will only be worth watching and savouring if we keep that 100,000 in play. Linz, open the box after the break. Oh. <laughs> And you chose Linz before the break, but she didn't pull the seal. And I could ask her minder very nicely <laughs> to ask his client whether or not she could open the box, you know. But... Would you like her to open the box? <laughs> <laughs> Genius. Oh, go on then, go for it. Go on, Linz. Tracking blurt, Rich. Good luck. Ooh. Oh! 35,000. What a shame. That round was really shaping up brilliant. Mm. Ugh. What do you think? Um, yeah. <laughs> Hello. I know it makes a huge difference. We think it's a shame. <laughs> Hang on. Hang on. This is great news. This is very, very good news. You have one thing on your side, Rich. Go on. The banker hasn't got a clue what to make of you. <laughs> He's studied human behavioural sciences. He has degrees in psychology, human behaviour and non-verbal communication. And you're struggling to read him. Very, very interesting. You lost the 35,000 and you have a huge hole there. Mm. But he is offering you 6,200 pounds. Right. Do you know you've managed to do something that um, I can't recall another player doing? Certainly not in recent memory. He's totally flummoxed. He has absolutely no idea about you. And I suspect he's, because he's a very suspicious individual, I suspect he's thinking, is this all a, an act? Is this a front? Or is he here really 
to go all the way regardless. Now, if I, you know, follow my own advice, what I said to Hannah yesterday, I said, don't start chasing figures that you've already, you know, because I've been offered seven and a half grand and now it's gone lower, so players automatically, I think, tend to, tend to keep going because it hasn't reached that peak level. I mean, the reality you've got here, Rich, is £100,000 is out there somewhere. Mm. If you carry it to five box, you are going to get a big offer. Yeah. It's all on, if you go on, it's all on getting through the next round without discovering the 100000 I've always sort of said that, you know, if that hundred grand goes, then, you, then you're chasing, you're chasing figures. That hundred grand's always going to give you a bit of leverage, isn't it? If you, if you pick that one, the next, next round, it's, it's game over, isn't it? Yeah, it's, not quite, it's not quite game over. No. Should we go to Endermax? We'll go tell it then. Yeah. Go on then. I take that. You want the question. £6,200. Deal or no deal? No deal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Scotter and make good telly. Well, I'm, I'm more interested in you now getting through the next round, keeping 100,000 and 10,000 in play and giving the banker a real problem. 11, Sarah. Okay, Sarah, one task. This round, don't discover the 100,000. Gonna really miss her, Rich. Perfect start. Can you keep the perfection going? Hundred pounds. Next one. Nineteen, Claire. We mustn't see it. It's as simple as that. Thank you, Claire. I'm gonna really miss you, Rich. Oh, please, not that one. A thousand's fine. <laughs> right, come on. All on this part. <laughs> this is it. Wow. Thought we were going to be here today, Johnny. Can we get to the next call with the banker completely flummoxed? If this is the 100,000, in that sense, it's game over. And I don't even want to see the 10 grand because I think he needs it. If this is blue, let's raise the roof. Away you go, Johnny. Good luck, pretty boy. 10,000, all right. Lost his <laughs> Well, not I. <laughs> this is going to be very, very interesting indeed. Hello? Oh, you don't know what to do. Well, well, do something rash, and I'll see if I can persuade him to take a lot of your cash. What? Oh, dear me. He uh, now would like to buy your box for £5,000. <laughs> you got a big groan with that. Yes, hello. Okay. Ten thousand pounds. Ten grand, top of the game. Now, the scenario here. You could deal. Yeah. In the next round, find the hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. And from nowhere, you've turned the whole game around and you've actually spanked the banker. Not just beaten him, you will have spanked him. On the other hand, have an all-blue round, and your next offer is going to be stratospheric. What do you want to do, Rich? Right. Um, as, you know, as I've stood there, over there, and I've watched people be in this situation. It's a lot easier over there. And you've got your sensible head on over there. And you can make 
you know, you've got a decent sort of level of, of judgment, and then you come up here. And it's almost sort of like a, an element of competition that you want to sort of beat him and sort of just sort of shake your fist at him, you know. Which you don't get over there. Go on then. £10,000. Deal or no deal? I think it was just one of them games. I'll tell you what I want you to do. It's been a very unusual game. Mm. And I can't recall the last time the banker admitted he was completely flummoxed in the middle of a game. Mm. So I'd like you to complete his flummoxing with a good old-fashioned spanking. Well, that ain't saying where it is. I, I've not even seen you there. <coughs> Go on, then. Love you. <laughs> I, hope a, I hope it's a big red. <laughs> No, 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 who clap? <laughs> well, I know Lisa, she always clapped because she didn't follow anything, but that was a great start. If we'd still been live. Oh, Rich, I hope you haven't blown a big chance now. Come on, find it. Ten, Lisa. Go on, Lisa. You're awesome. You've got the 100,000. Come on, prove it. No! No, no! Oh, now, if we had still been live, if you had said no deal... This was a perfect round. You have one shot. Find a hundred thousand. Four. Four. Alice. Go on, Alice. Go prove you've got it. Rich. No. Oh, no. Yeah. Ooh. Has it come here again? Bad time. Has it been in box seventeen? Two games in a row. Oh, this is going to be very, very interesting indeed. Hello, Rich. The reality is that if you had declined £10,000, he would have come to the conclusion, the hard conclusion, that you were likely to be unstoppable. But he'd have given it his best shot at £31,000. You were that close, Rich, to £31,000. And just purely because I want to know, would you have taken it? Yeah. You'd have quit at 31,000. I'm not going on with 100 quid. And that's the way that I'd have looked at. Would you mind sitting down, please? So, you'd have taken 31,000. Mm. Rich, go on. I get a feeling that if there's 100,000 in here, you're going to have a big regret. Because I think you want to do big things in your life. And I really, really hope that you've managed to get a very, very nice sum of money for a £100 box. Or have you turned your back on Deal's second greatest prize? <laughs> Over there, thank you. That completes it. Your game is over. So you went with ten thousand. It's not a spanking because you could have had thirty-one thousand. Mm. How do you feel? Um, if maybe if I'd have believed in them things a bit more, that number eight box being my dad's number, which I don't really, then you know, the handful of really painful games we've had been when people have brought a belief and the belief has been shattered by a game that when all is said and done is totally random mm. so you're going away with ten thousand pounds and your belief in your father's number intact mm -hmm. well, I, think, I think that's a bit of a result yep rich it's been a real pleasure to meet you Ten grand. and i do believe that is a really really important point he made there a uh, number of players Different people celebrate in different ways.
different plates come with different beliefs. And it's not a lot of fun when the inner belief is shattered. But I think you'll agree, a very unusual and very different player. And that's what we do on Deal. Every game is different, and that's why I know you'll be back tomorrow. I'll see you then. Bye-bye. Emily Blunt and Lord Melvin Bragg meet the daytime king Paul O'Grady next on four.